Did Emery Tate actually have a photographic memory? Emery Tate holds the military record for the fastest assimilation of a foreign language. He learnt Russian in two weeks. There have been stories told that Emery Tate could remember every single phone number he was ever told. He could remember every single address he was ever told. So there is a lot of proof to show that he did have a photographic memory. The following game is Emery Tate's most historical, well-renowned game that I've never shown on this channel. This is so insane, you won't believe this is a genuine chess game. But I think this game is proof that he does have a photographic memory. I do have a new online community, go check that out. It is absolutely amazing, I give you my word. There is about a thousand pound worth of courses that are coming on there one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. There'll be a lot of high net worth people in there. This game was played in New York, 1993. Emery Tate, those Maurice Ashley. Let's go. We see the move E4, C5. By the way, this is Emery Tate's signature move. You know when Emery Tate plays the move E4, things are going down. The move C5, this is known as the Sicilian defense. Knight F3 and D6. Getting these knights in the game, you wanna get your knights in before the bishops. The reason behind D6 is to open up this bishop. It doesn't really matter though, because D4 now. Blasting open. This is known as the open Sicilian. So we see it takes knight d4 and knight f6, just attacking this pawn. So Emery Tate defends it. Knight f6. And now knight c6 contesting this knight, getting these knights in before the bishops. That's an opening principle you can implement in your own games. Now bishop g5. So Emery Tate just developing these pieces very nicely. You want to get your bishops, knights, your queen, and then castle. So he's pretty much just following the script. This is known as the rich arouser variation. Here Maurice Ashley goes e6, preparing to go bishop e7, developing his pieces. Now queen d2. Queen d2 is normally ever only played for one reason, and one reason only, and we're going to explore that after the move a6, just restricting all these pieces. Mobility, very nice move. Now we see the idea behind queen d2, because he's going to castle long sides, and... The game has just started. There is going to be fire on the board. This is a dragon nurse dragon. I was going to say, you know, something else. But no, this is dragon nurse dragon. And h6. h6, tricky move. If you slide back to bishop h4, try to get all smart, you might get hit by knight e4. And if you try to take this queen, you know, this. remember this knight is attacking this queen. So a very deadly move. Bishop h4, you can go here. So there's some deadly tactics here. So Emery Tate knows better. He doesn't want to dive into that deep woods of unknown possibilities deep woods poem po a bit of poetry there and now queen c7 getting that queen in and now f3 f3 defending this pawn rook b8 and now you might be wondering rook b8 what does this do it prepares a big launch it prepares you know when you're lock knocking down like the walls of some like massive fortress you've got that this is a battering ram rooks are battering rams i've been saying this for a while rooks are battering rams G4, this is battering ram, that's battering ram. G4, now knight E5, knight hops in, says, you know what, I'm bringing this central. Knight in the center of the board is most valuable because it controls the most squares, also known as an octopus knight. So we see knight E5 and now F4, Emery Tate sacrificing this pawn. Easy stuff, sacking on these ops. Knight G4 and now bishop G1, bringing this bishop back. Thing is with this knight on g4, he's isolated this knight slightly. So this knight, this knight is on the rim of the board. And now, according to Maurice Ashley, he felt a bit intimidated here. He thought, you know what? You know, he's sacrificing on me. I can't let him do that. He's got a warrior mindset, Maurice Ashley, as well. e5. And by the way, I think there's a photo of Maurice Ashley and Andrew, Andrew Tate playing a chess game. You, you, you couldn't guess the next move. You, you couldn't guess the next move. It is bishop b5. So your knight is under attack and you're bringing this bishop out. Maurice actually thought this was a bold move. You see, a b5 and knight d to take. You, so you're taking here. Now, the thing with this queen on c7 is that it is vulnerable to sacrifices on this b5 square. Queen d8 and our bishop c5 sliding that queen in. And now d5. So, you know, if you if you were to take here, by the way, that is a checkmate in one. You know, according to my vocabulary of chess database that I keep updating every day, it is not a good idea to ha hang your pieces. So you don't want to take here. He goes d5. He's trying to counter blow. That, I'm not really too sure about this. He goes bishop a7 now, attacking this rook. Now, Maurice Ashley's best idea here is to actually go bishop d7. Just sacrifice the exchange back because you've got two bishops. If, if Emery Tate gives up his bishop for this rook, I, mean, I think two bishops. Personally, two bishops over a rook any day. So bishop d7, that's my type of move. Instead, he plays the move rook a8, trying to hold on material, being a bit greedy. Now, greedy is one of the seven deadly sins in chess. 
Knight d5 is now played. Knight's hopping in. Emery Tate is down two pieces on material. So he's going to have to win this back. Takes. Takes. Bang and bang. Not even taking back with the rook. There's a fork here. Royal fork. A royal fork when you hit the rook, king, and queen. King d7. Oh, this is a... Whoo! Knight, knight a8. Not even taking back. You, this queen can't escape because it's pinned. Next move is even more deadly. Queen d7. And now bishop b8. So he's just really trying to win this back. The knight is a bit trapped. It's going to be very interesting to see how he deals with this. So after bishop b8, we see king c7. We see a take, take, and now rook d3. Rook d3, why? Because this knight is about to get trapped. This knight is about to get trapped. You need to save it. So b5. That is not b5. This is b5. Bang. Rook h to d1, saying if you're going to go bishop b7 and trap my knight, that is one of the problems with taking a knight. Normally, you get the same pattern. You take a rook with the knight, your knight might get trapped. He's saying, now, if you go here, I'm going to go here. I'm going to check your king. And then I'm actually going to go rook d8 and save it. So bishop c5. Now, the bishops are very good in chess at controlling squares. Notice how Emery Tate doesn't really have an entry path here. You know, the bishops do a good job. Not good enough because, you know, rook d8. Kind of contradicting what I'm teaching. Takes back and takes back. We should be seven now attacking this knight. And now h3 is played. We see knight, knight f2 and taking here. Now this knight is distracted. We can take back. We see it takes and c3, giving this king a bit of breathing room. Knight f2. So b4 and we take apply some pressure. Bishop p7 and now rook b8. What's happening here? You, your king can't enter this square. The knight also does a very nice job here of helping. A knight and a rook can be an extremely deadly combo, by the way. I genuinely... Go, go off by yourself if you want to get better at chess. Just learn checkmating patterns. There's a lot of beautiful ones with knights and rooks. The move bishop g5 is played now, checking the king. We see king c2 and h5. h5 is, you know, black has lost a bit of the advantage here. The material is equal, by the way. And we take and play the spectacular move a4. Because if you take, we go b5. And we actually win this bishop. Because if take, take, take take we take this bishop remember this king is defending this bishop so we can sack if we can distract this king we can win this so bishop a8 is t played for that reason takes back now he doesn't even take back he's got the double pass pawns can he do this is good oh, it begs the question can he do this king d7 and now rook a8 bishop f4 and now rook f8 saying if you're gonna take i can take here i'm gonna gobble up so king e7 here and now we see h4 Saying, you can take, but I'm going to go g5. And you've actually got to go rook h5 here, because if you take, I take this pawn. Remember, if I go here, and then you take here, I will, well, I'm actually in the game. Playing well. And by the way, the position's about equal. So after this, we see g5, but he goes back here, which, you know, a bit of a passive defense, which... Passive doesn't always work. Bishop e5 attacking this rook. rook sorry, rook g8. And now f6. And so now, you know, you've got to be careful here. b6 is played, but king f7 and rook a8... And the problem is this bishop controls this square and these pawns are sliding down. G4 is played, it's a race. G4, rook A1, and now G3. How are you even going to do this? Rook G1, and now knight E4. We see C4, king E6, king sliding in, king E6, king D3, we see F5, so you can't take any more. And now king e3. So this king's trying to get back. Position's equal. But these pawns are looking a bit more dangerous. Now the move knight g5. Maybe preparing some stuff like this. So c5 is played now. And after f4 check and king d3. Emery Tate is in serious danger here. He's actually supposed to lose this game. It's a miracle what he does next. Rook e1. And there's only one correct pawn push here from Maurice Ashley that wins the game. I'll let you try pause the video and try find it. I invite you to do that. Daily exercise to get your mind active. So if you did find it, the move is F G is G2. G2 because F2 was played and it allows a sacrifice. You take, take, and now Emery Tate can slide back. And he does, King E2. But if G2 was played here and you played this, well, you can promote with the Queen. And Knight F3. Knight F3 is a better try, though, because if you go here, you lose to this. You promote to a Queen. Emery Tate knows better. He goes B7. Now Knight D5. Now F1. Knight C6. And b5 can you survive this king b8 the problem is after c6 you can't survive this because if you push the pawn up the board you he's always going to control this square so if we go here it's still not going to i mean you you can't go here because it's not your move but after the move king d6 if you go there it doesn't work so the move king d6 after this both players agree to a draw if you want to join my online community i promise you it is worth the money there's a video you can watch below if you want to join this movement like and subscribe, join the Discord. 
That is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.